Hello everyone, I'm Betts Golden. Today I am going to basically walk through and make a simple card or one that can easily be modified to be created with um, just the basics on hand. I'm going to um, probably amp it up a little bit just because I do have things, but as I go through through the process, I will go ahead and tell you how you can modify um, it with just some basic basic things, okay? If that makes any sense at all. So the first thing I'm going to start with is an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. And this cardstock actually is a really fun wood grade cardstock, and I have a lot of it. And I thought that this would work nicely with this. I'm going to create my card base. So what I'm going to do, eight and a half, 11 piece of cardstock. You're just going to slice it down the middle at five and a half mark. Okay. So we're at a five and a half mark right there. Now, all you have to do is you're going to score it in the middle. If you don't have a scoreboard, I'm going to show you right now how you can do this. You just take it over, line up the edges and just fold it. You don't necessarily have to have a scoreboard but it does make it nice and crisp however if you don't just fold it like that then take the back of your scissors or something flat and pull it on through like so so now we have a card front a card base that measures an a2 size an a2 size is 4.25 by five and a half inches. So when you go to the store and you're looking for envelopes, you're gonna want A2 size envelopes. I always like to mat my card, so I'm going to cut down a mat, and I'm going to use some specialty stamping paper today because I want to create my background. So to do so, I'm simply going to take and cut down a four by 5.25 piece of paper of this stamping specialty paper. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want there to be a nice border on it as well. So let's see if I can get that out of this sheet that I already had. Yes, I can. So I'm just going to take and do 5.25 first. And now I'm going to do my four on it like so. Okay, and then I need just to show you, and you'll be able to see it more as I get things colored in, that it creates a really nice border around the edge of my stamp. The other thing that I wanna do is I'm going to stamp the back and then I'm also gonna put an image down. And I thought that the image that would be nice to use would be this one right here. And I'm going to use I'm Hooked On You as the sentiment. So what I want to do is I want to figure out how big this stamp is because I'm going to want to mat it. So I can see through here. So it is roughly two. I probably need a sheet, a little thing that is two by three inches. So once again, I'm going to use this stamp paper because I'm going to stamp on it, right? So I like to cut everything out first and then go in and start to put things together. It just helps me, that's how I kind of process. So this needs to be two by three. And so I'm going to cut down the three first, wait, yes. So this is already about three just have to cut it. So I'm going to do the two first. I can talk. <laughs> I can count two. Sorry, you can't see that. It's a little bit off screen. And then I'm going to do the three next. Then I want to make sure that this is going to fit. And it is. And it looks like I even have enough room for the I'm hooked on you sentiment on the top, which is perfect. But I want to mount that as well. So I'm going to go and pull off the extra piece that I had of this. Now you can make two card bases like I did out of um, out of that one sheet, okay? So I can take this extra sheet and make a card base out of it. However, I would like to mat my 
stamped image onto the card front. So what I'm going to do is I am going to cut down a piece. Oop, that's for later. I'm gonna cut down a piece and I'm gonna do 2.25 by 3.25. All right, so now let me show you what we got and then we can start to construct our card and do the fun stuff. All right, so this is how it's gonna lay out on the card. This is what it's gonna look like, all right? So I have my card base, my card front, then I have a map for my image and my little sentiment that I'm going to use. So from here, what I wanna do, now this is gonna be sloppy on the back, okay? Most people don't care, is I wanna go ahead and just take and ink the edge back with a little bit of blending tool. You can do the following steps all in black ink if that's all you have. It would be really a classy, beautiful card. But I'm gonna be using my Simon Hurley Midnight Snack, fake plant and game over for this process. So for me, I think I would like to use um, my game over just on the edges because I'm going to be adhering that card front. So I'm just gonna go through and just ink up the edges with my blending tool like so. So you could do this with black. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I do want that wood gray to shine through. If you are going to be creating a background on your card front, you do not need to necessarily do this if it's a flat um, card base. But I have these really pretty wood grades in there. So I want to just make them pop. So I am just going through like so and adding down some ink like this. All right. If you guys haven't subscribed to my channel, I certainly hope that you consider doing so. Also, make sure you hit that little bell that does notify you whenever I have a video that comes out. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure that you share it if you know of anyone who would enjoy it. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below um, and I will try to get back to you with that. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside and now we're going to work on our uh, base. And what I'm gonna do for the base is I want to do that blending again, but this time I'm gonna do fake plant. So I'm just gonna take this off and blend this in. And this is such a beautiful um, paper to use for this technique. So I'm just blending it on through. Like so. It's like a matte cardstock. It's really, really special paper. Specialty paper. That's why they call it that, right? All right. And then I'm going to just flick it with a little bit of water. Get it to move a little bit. And then I'm gonna take my heat tool and just dry it because I'm going to layer on a background stamp after this. So you could totally do what I just did with black ink or you could skip it entirely and just stamp. It just really depends on what you have on hand and, and whatnot, but I always like to just, you know, do something like this where I can create my own background color and then work from there. 
All right, so I'm gonna just take this. I don't think it's quite dry yet. We'll see. Clean this up, because I don't want that to transfer everywhere. And since it's a dye ink, I can lift it with paper with no problem whatsoever. Yeah, that actually is dry. All right, so from here, I wanna take my rubber stamp. This is a peel apart rubber stamp by Simon Hurley and it's the swirly fern, but I'm going to actually just leave it um, together. I'm not going to peel it apart just for strictly creating a background. I'm going to use Midnight Snack on this. I'm just going to ink this up. You could put it in your Misty if you want, but I'm just going to actually pop my paper on top of it and then just press. Make sure that I have really, really nice coverage here. Even though I'm not gonna be using the edges, I do like to get everything on. Now from here, I'm gonna take my piece of paper and then just pop it down like so, okay, but I wanna add some pressure. So I'm going to take my Make Art Station by Wendy and I'm gonna use the back so the ink won't mess up the front because I have discovered that with this particular station, it's awesome, but certain types of ink eventually will remove the grid. So I do a lot of stuff on the back. And I'm just using this just to press do that pressure and I have the image so I'm just gonna wipe it off and since I didn't use the front it's not going to affect that grid all right so let's see here what we have how pretty is that so our background is done pretty much so we can move on to our um, our main focus our image and I do like to clean off dye ink because it will transfer to my next project if I do not. And then I am going to take, just because I'll forget if it's dry or not, I am going to take my heat tool and just hit this so it doesn't smear. All right, so let me set this aside. Now for this one, I want to take, and again, I'm gonna mat this on here. So I wanna take my game over once again and just ink up this mat. And I don't have to worry about getting it everywhere because um, it's gonna be covering my, my image center will be covering this so just have to get it in some spots like so okay so that's fun done with that and now from here I'm going to just wipe that up because I don't want to get the ink on my paper and I'm going to be pulling in my foam mat, my cheapy foam mat, because I'm going to be stamping with a clear stamp. And I thought that this one matched the background pretty. So, just gonna take this off on a foam stamp pad. Um, and then I'm going to go I need to put some powder down because I'm going to be embossing it as well. So I just want to take and run my static pouch over it. I'm going to be embossing it with fired brick and I'm going to be using Game Over as the ink. So I have my embossing little thingy that catches the 
powder here because I'm going to want to work relatively quickly through this step simply because dye ink, it's going to sit on the surface here for um, a little bit longer than if I were using just regular cardstock because it is slick. However, dye ink does eventually dry and embossing powder will not adhere to it like um, it would on a pigment ink and that's totally normal. I have a little bit more play time with it, workability, because I am using a stamping, a specialty stamping paper, but not much. So I wanna pull this down and leave some room for my sentiment on the top. And I'm just going to take and just stamp that out. Beautiful. And then I'm going to put my embossing glaze over it. And since I did the static foam on it, I don't have to worry about having uh, a little bit of ink or a little bit of powder in spots I don't really want it. Okay, so I have this heated up now and I'm just gonna take my heat gun and Emboss away. All right, so that needs to set up and dry for just a moment. And I just like to take the opportunity to get my powder back into my jar, like so, because the longer I leave it out, the more chance I have of actually, um, well, knocking it over. And that wouldn't be any good. So I'm done with this for now, and I'm going to stamp my sentiment, and then I'm actually gonna go in with my distress, um, like the distress embossing pins, and color in some of that, and then do another distress glaze on top of it. So the sentiment that I want to use is going to be, I am hooked on you. And so let's see here. There we go, so I'm hooked on it. It's right here. So again, just on my block. And for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and use Midnight Snack. Like so. On the top right there. All right. And now I want to go in and color with my pin. I've gone ahead and pulled out my distress embossing pins. And basically all these are is it's just a pin with embossing fluid inside. If you have a distress, excuse me, if you have an embossing um pad or embossing liquid, it's basically clear pigment ink, you can just pick some up with a paintbrush and do the same thing. I want to note that I accidentally contaminated my pins the first time I used them because I mistakenly used them with a pigmented black ink that I had embossed and some of it did not emboss so it pulled that color through and now I have a black tip. So this is not ideal. Um, however, for what I want, it's gonna work. If you don't have embossing powder, that's totally okay. You can stamp the sentiments or whatever you want, your image out in black and proceed from there. You don't need all the other stuff. This would be a stunning card, like I said, if you just had some black ink and some white cards stock. So I'm going to go ahead and just start to color in this. And how this works is I am using um, this embossing, this distress pin. And what it does is it will allow me to use either embossing powder or the glaze over it. I'm using the glaze. And the glaze is really fun because it just gives a hint 
of a color. It literally glazes it. Whereas embossing powder doesn't have anything other than pure pigmented powder on it and it embosses it entirely in that color. And this is fun if you wanna layer colors down or do different images, things like that. The embossing glaze is a lot of fun and this pin just allows you to get your precision in. So I'm going to do this section right here in the peel paint. All right, so I'm just gonna lay this out and peel paint, and I use the bullet tip on that. And it's okay, like, and look, and now I see where I missed some, so I can just go right back in, right there, and just pick that up. I missed that section. It's okay to dump the whole thing out on this because you're just gonna put it back in the container. Make sure that your heat gun is already nice and hot before you put it on, otherwise you will end up blowing your embossing powder or glaze everywhere. So I'm gonna heat set this with you right now, and then I will do the same thing on the other section, like on the white section of the order mint with emb my embossing glaze and cracked pistachio. And you know that it's heat set when it goes from powdery finish to shine. All right, so that is entirely heat set and I can go ahead and move on. I'm going to use the brush tip pen because I don't have to get into all those little nooks and crannies and do it with the right, dice. So I wanna show you something. This was not what I anticipated, which is okay. Um, as you can tell, I went ahead and did the pistachio, cracked pistachio embossed glazed over this. And if you notice, I have like little white specks in there and I really don't want that. And I also have noticed that when I was doing my coloring, I was sloppy and so I have some of the pistachio laid over the peel paint. And I'm like, hmm, that's kind of pretty. So what I'm going to do is I wanna take another static run to this because I've been handling it quite a bit. I'm going to take my Distress Embossed Dabber, and this time I'm just going to kind of dab over the whole thing. And I'm going to put pistachio over all of it. So look how pretty that is. By laying down the glaze, what it did was it still allowed that peel paint to shine through. Well, it also allowed me to cover up the rest of those little white spots. So from here, I do wanna go ahead and get that top also colored in to look like the top of a ornament. So I am just gonna go back to my embossing pen bullet point and I'm going to lay down some of this hickory smoke glaze on top of it. And that will go ahead and finish off this card. Uh, well, this image, I should say, not the card. So look how pretty this is gonna be. Let me set this off to the side. We'll, we will emboss it together. Now, I did go ahead and accidentally get a little bit of powder on some areas I don't want. So I just take a, um, a soft bristle brush and just brush it away. It's totally fine. But after you heat set it, it will be there permanently. All right, look at that. Isn't that so pretty? Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and just assemble our card. One thing that I wanna do is I do wanna ink the edges a little bit here with some of this midnight blue. I think I probably, yeah, I do, have enough on my blending tool to do so. And just to, I like to ink the edges often, whenever I can. All right, so there's that. I'm gonna ink the edges also on this one just to distress it a little bit. And now we're gonna go ahead and just assemble the card. 
So for the card assemblage, I'm going to take it and I'm actually going to use my Make Art Station. I have this little one, I absolutely love it. So I'm going to take this one right down here like so, and I'm going to assemble it flat. And I wanna make sure that, okay, so I'm gonna put off to the side up there as well, down here, down here. So I wanna put this little guy on first and I'm just gonna line him up and you can just really line it up with the grids. You know, you can be able to tell where it is. I'm gonna use some art glitter glue. This is my very favorite. On the side, I have a little pop dot in which I can put the needle in to keep it so I don't lose it. Just flip this on over. I like liquid adhesive. Um, I used to be a big tape runner fan, but I have switched to this because you can kind of move it. And even if it gets outside of where you're, you're gluing, it dries clear so you can't even tell. All right, so for this one, I'm just gonna line it up. The grid pieces help me do so. Perfect. And then for this, I'm going to take same thing, just line it up in the center and take those off. Oh, and also you guys, I love this because these are nice and foamy, so I don't like and there's a negative and positive, so these are the two the same, so they're, they won't fit together, but like that one will. Oh, nope, maybe not. Oh, they, they're not adhering. Oh, it's on like that. Anyway, it's hard for me to pinch myself with these. That was my point in telling you that. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna line this up once again. All right, and I want this to be about there, so I need to get it lined up a little bit better. So I'm just gonna take my ruler that's magnetic and put it here, and that's where I'm gonna put the base of this next mat. All right, so here is this, and you know what? Let's get the So this is, I'm gonna go with four inches on that. So I'm gonna pull it down to here. That's the zero mark. So we just wanna line it up there like so. And then take the center, last but not, certainly not least, it is the main focal, and just line it up in the center like so. And now we have a cute little Christmas card that just basically all you really need is paper cutter and your favorite ink pad. Super easy to make. Like I said, I had all that stuff on hand. Feel free to modify as you want. This would be beautiful simply if you just used black and white. That would still be a really stunning card. You don't have to do all of this um, extra, you know, stuff I did with the ink and whatnot. But um, yeah. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it was a little bit different. I've been doing techniques and stuff a lot, but sometimes it's fun to see a full thing come together and how somebody processes. So I hope that you enjoyed it. Until next time, I'm Bets Golden. Happy crafting.